all right guys so in this video i'm going to show you how to use the lasso tool to color your drawings and take them from looking like this to this so make sure you watch till the end now first thing we want to do is pull up photoshop and choose the lasso tool right here and what i like to do is when you when you come into photoshop first you're going to find your anti-alias turned on now i just like to turn it off because what it does is it prevents your edges from being very rugged so when you have it on and let me just draw a shape and you draw a simple shape you're going to have your edges looking very smooth so you can see the edges right here are looking very smooth but when you turn it off and you draw a shape you're going to have very rough edges as you can see right here the edges are really rough and looking very jagged now this is the kind of look i love having in my work when it looks really smooth like this it just makes the work look very digital but when it's jagged like this it makes it look like there's some texture to it and that's the feeling i love to invoke with my work all right now to start off i just create a new layer underneath the, li the line art layer and then i go over the line art with the magnetic lasso tool now i love to use the magnetic lasso tool because it just automatically goes over the drawings it goes over your lines no matter where you put it it's always going to stick onto the lines now you have to be careful using this because some areas are going to be a little bit rough so you have to go in after filling it and use a brush to just clean it up and fill in those areas that the lasso tool missed now next thing is I just create this gray layer and it's really just a color hold layer it doesn't serve any purpose but just to be a silhouette of the character and then i create layers above it and then fill in the rest of the elements of the character like the hair his skin his clothes and how i'm doing this is i'm thinking of the entire range of the colors and i'm keeping everything really cool so the actual design of the character has a lot of blues and then his skin tones his gloves and his hair are the warm part so that's exactly what i'm doing right here i'm thinking of that in my head too i'm keeping his skin and his gloves really warm while his clothes are going to be cool and then the uh the shirt he has tied on his waist is going to be a little way warm too now this next part is actually going to be the most important part so listen closely i just create a multiply layer and then i fill it with blue and that's going to serve as the base shadow now once you've created your base shadow next thing you want to use is the lasso tool and right now i'm using the uh freehand lasso tool and i'm just selecting areas where the light is hitting so i'm leaving the areas where the so i'm leaving the areas that are in shadow and then i'm just cutting out the areas that the light is hitting and i just select them and then i use delete to delete them and then i just make the shadows brighter with ctrl u and then next thing i do is create a new layer above that set it on screen and then i start filling it in with lighter colors now why i love to use the screen layer is because it automatically makes whatever color you apply on it lighter even though you use a really dark color so you have to be careful when you're using um darker or lighter color so if you use a really light color it's going to blow up and be really really light so you have to use darker colors if you want to use a screen layer for your light now i'm not even using any brush at this point i just make a selection and then i use alt backspace to fill it with the color that i've already chosen now because I'm on a screen layer that's why everything is just um becoming lighter so no matter what color i use it's just going to be light now if this were a multiply layer no matter what color you use it's going to be darker so later on in the video i'm going to use the multiply layer to complete the rest of the shading and you're going to see exactly how that's going to look now one thing i'm thinking of when doing this is the shape that the drawing already had now now this image was originally drawn by hisham hapchi he's a really skilled artist insanely skilled and he's a good friend of mine so i just asked for his permission and he sent me this image and right now i'm just coloring it and showing you guys how to do it so if you want to see more of his work you should definitely check out his instagram account you can see a ton of his drawings and boy he has really really amazing drawings his style is one of my favorite styles so yeah right now what i'm doing is just thinking of the direction that his shapes are moving and then i'm trying to follow that direction with my 
shading so whatever shape i create i'm making sure it's flowing with the initial uh shape he already had in his drawing now this is something you want to think about when you're doing your own shapes to when you're creating shapes in your own drawings as well or when you're coloring your own drawings as well so if you have a straight shape or if you have a shape that's in a rectangle you want to make sure that you're shading it and following that same rectangular pattern now if you have a circular shape or a curved shape you want to make sure that your shades your the shapes you're creating with your lasso tool are also going in that curving motion you don't want to have triangles or a square shape where you're you're having curved edges but you can also do that too but i wouldn't do that now next thing i'd love to do is to begin to create more shadows to make the form look more defined especially where especially the parts that are not in sh in the light so the shadow areas i just create some more depth in there with creating more shadows and i do that using a multiply layer and then i put it above all the other layers but it's still below the line art and then i use a lighter color this time because if you use darker colors it's just going to be really really super dark so i'm creating um shapes and using colors that are above that are high up on the uh the set the, the this thing that you choose your colors with i'm using colors that are really uh light and a little bit saturated now at this point you just want to be careful so you don't make the edges too dark you don't make your shadows too dark you just want to think about the occlusions first and those are the places where light does not hit at all you want to make sure those parts are the darkest and then you gradually build up more uh, value build up more lightness build up more shades when you're coming up towards where the light part is now is this is very easy to do once you've done studies but if you don't understand this i'll suggest you just uh do some do some value studies from movies just take a movie you like turn it to black and white and then just paint that and understand the value ranges that they're using in that movie and after you do that you can do the same thing with some paintings of your favorite artists or some paintings of master painters turn their work to black and white and then notice how the values shift and the values change when they're um transitioning from shadow to light and you can take that knowledge and then apply it into your own work when you're creating your own images now this is actually going to take some time it might take some months but eventually when you really understand this concept you can translate it into doing any style that you think of whether it's painting whether it's comics you really can translate this knowledge into any style that is why apparently it seems easy for me to switch from doing comic styles like this and just switch to painting with within a few weeks or a few couple of days or the blink of an eye it just takes time for you to build that um build that solid foundation of you know learning art understanding your values and just understanding how to create images using just the fundamentals and just make sure you're nailing those studies and definitely you're going to see so much improvement with your work now what i'm about to do right now is i want to begin creating the fire and i like i love to do this by first using an overlay layer to make it more saturated so i choose an overlay layer and then i use a little bit of red to make it saturated and then closer to where the fire is um the brightest i use a yellow there then next i create a layer above that layer and set it on linear dodge and then i start painting in the brighter parts this just makes the fire look like it's really hot and it's really really blazing and that's especially the look that it is in the actual game itself so this isn't official art for the game but if this were what the artist did in the game well it definitely won't be anything far from this technique now next thing you want to consider is making sure that the places that are really bright you want to have them the lightest when it comes to the flames and then as it's receding away from the epicenter where the flame is coming from you can make it a little bit darker next thing i do is i create a no normal layer and then i start painting the reflections for where the fire is now this isn't a realistic technique so you don't have to go over the top and go crazy painting everywhere that that fire will touch so i'm just 
implying areas that the lights will touch with the fire i'm not making i'm not making sure that everywhere is just being lit by fire so i hope you learned something from this video i hope you enjoyed this technique i want i'd love to see what you can do with this uh technique so make sure you color your own images and tag me on instagram and we'll see how you guys adapted this technique in your work uh if you love this video leave it a like subscribe to my youtube channel if you're new here and share this video with a friend and i'll see you guys in the next episode peace wasting too much time because we've actually wasted some time just a little bit of time and uh you say time don't wait for no man so uh well maybe it waits for a woman but i don't know see out here in louisiana we don't really know that kind of thing we just go around and um do what all the, what the other uh, country folk in Louisiana do. I don't know what 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 you African folk do, but uh, hell, I don't even know what I'm saying. Damn, I'm acting stupid out here, man. I'm acting a fool on my own YouTube channel. On my own YouTube channel. Why are you acting stupid on your own YouTube channel? I thought you are a very sensible YouTuber. You only give them sense on your channel. Well, that's what I'm about. That's what I'm trying to do on my YouTube channel. But I don't know what you're saying. Use African. How'd you learn how to draw? I used to draw on rock and stone and i used to use tree and leaf to draw that is how i learned how to draw i don't know about you and i don't know why you are asking how i know how to draw but that is exactly how i know how to draw so you tell me you you learn how to draw by using trees in africa and um a bunch of stones that's how you learn how to draw in africa with trees and stone and rock that's what you telling me i said that is what i'm telling you stop asking me any questions okay see you in my next video peace hey guys i'm going to be live on twitch and i'll be reviewing art and calling some of my subscribers so make sure you follow the stream and subscribe to me on twitch